Today is Wednesday, the 11th of November, the year 2020. It's about 7.15 in the morning. I'm a targeted individual. I'm a Christian. And we're all involved in spiritual warfare right now. I've been listening to people who are saying they have prophetic messages from God and how time has run out for people to change and choose God, to choose life, to choose our King Jesus. I started thinking about how um, a person might be overtaken by badness and in a position where their circumstances won't allow them to to, to live through the end of the system because of their bad decisions. People are not born bad. We are born with human imperfection because of Adam. So that makes us vulnerable to being influenced by demonic spirits, witchcraft, all the tools that the ruler of the system uses to, to corrupt mankind. I, would, I was thinking about a book I read. I picked up not that, I don't know, several years ago. It had an interesting title. And... Uh, Sorry, you know my head, I'm getting I'm getting hit right now heavily with EMF. So the, the book was a story of a woman who lived in an isolated community with her family. Her mother died, so she lived with her father and her two brothers. The community was kind of like in the mountains. And they were they, they're white. And the majority of the people there not rich, did not have a lot of money, resources, but they had a home that they lived in. And it's the plight of this woman who was raped by each male family member during her lifetime living in that house. I can't remember when they said that um, the mother died. But what I do remember is, in her preteen years, the way the book was written, she got to a point where she hated when nighttime came because she never knew who was going to come into her room and rape her. So this was the father, the two brothers. It's a true story, kind of a biography of a woman who you never would imagine would live a life like that. So by the time she reached 19, she escaped this community and was living somewhere um, where the church was helping her. Not mainstream church, but a church that was really there to help people. Then I stopped reading the book because I, I just couldn't stand it. It was so pathetic. Even in that environment, when she got away from the, her family, things didn't always go so great in the church. So I was thinking about the nature of demonic spirits. People aren't born with demonic spirits. People are born with human imperfection, which makes them imperfect. It makes them vulnerable to demonic spirits. I was thinking about at what point 
did this family come under the influence of demonic spirits that they would have an environment where they would live and terrorize the daughter her entire life now she'd been being she was being raped since she was young and there were three men in the house and they each raped her it wasn't always nighttime I mean I could barely read the pages in this book and the only reason I picked the book up because it had an interesting title it drew me in and I just sort of flipped through it and then I just threw it away because it's so disturbing my point in sharing this with you is trying to I don't know, maybe you have a better understanding, Christians, about the nature of spirits. And how they can influence someone to wrongdoing. So, if I, I'm pretty sure I have this right. Demonic possession doesn't mean automatically that you will give in and do what they are trying to induce you to do. Because we have free will from God. So, that, that I'm pretty certain of. Free will trumps the influences of demonic spirits. But not, not a lot of people are educated. We know that the churches today, they don't talk about demon possession, demonic possession. And... They don't educate you on how to overcome it. None of that. Most of the time you get lessons that are, are the milk. Jesus said, you know, you need to get past the milk. Start eating solid food. And then that brings me back to the videos that I was watching about people who are saying time is up. If you haven't picked our King Jesus, you, if you don't choose life, you don't have a choice anymore. I don't believe that that's true. Because if that were the case, there wouldn't be a judgment, right? The judgment is to determine or to pass sentence or to determine at what point a person is guilty of, of a life of human imperfection and wrongdoing under the influence of demonic spirits. So, that, so that's the purpose of this video is to If a person is overtaken by demonic spirits, sorry, I have to hold the phone. And they follow the leadings of these demonic spirits and commit wrongdoing, as in the case of these men who raped their sister and their daughter her entire life. I don't know. I'm sorry. I had a question in there. Now I'm just thinking about the matter. People might say, well, they're just evil. That wasn't a demonic spirit. I don't think so. No, because we're created in God's image. God didn't make a mistake. We made a mistake. So now we have this human imperfection. In other words, we have less going for us to say no to demonic spirits because of a human imperfection that we inherited through the first man, Adam. But we're not left without help. So this would be the opportunity for mankind to ask for help because of our weaknesses, which a lot of people don't, they don't do or they don't know that they should do. So, and of course, this is the blinding effect of the ruler of this system. It all kind of comes back around full circle. If you blind people to spiritual help that they can get from God's Holy Spirit, from drawing close to God, understanding who God is. 
They may never think about calling on God for help, but that's not true. Right? Because you, you find that in most cases, and I think, I'm going to say every case, people that are desperate, they have some pivotal event in their life and they're desperate. They never spent, they may, maybe they've never spent one day in a church, but suddenly there's something catastrophic that happens to them. First thing they do, they start thinking about God, praying to God for help. Yeah, so, I believe that we're created with God knowing who God is, but maybe that sense of our, our lives doesn't get developed depending on your circumstances. So if you live in this isolated community in the mountains of poor people who are living on hard times and You know, they don't get positive reinforcements about their lives and so that they grow in a good, solid, spiritual way. Demonic spirits would take advantage of that. So I was thinking about the man in the graveyard, too, that Jesus delivered of all those legions of demonic spirits. What did what circumstances in his life made him vulnerable to be overtaken by a legion of demonic spirits? You have to let them in. You know what I mean? Your armor has to be weak. Your spiritual armor has to be weak. What did he do that he would be overtaken by a legion of demonic spirits. The way the, the Bible describes it, you start out with maybe some demonic spirits. Maybe, oh, this is one way that is really horrible, but families, you have somebody in your family who was practicing witchcraft, your aunt or whomever, sometimes the family can be cursed and you know, that's a chink in the armor of the family where you might be vulnerable to demonic spirits. But, I, but again, the guy in the graveyard, he was probably there to illustrate, of course, the command of our king. and He was there to sort of fulfill scripture for that time period that God would have Jesus, our king, here on the earth. It wasn't by chance, is what I'm saying. So that's what this video is about today. The, the nature of spirits, demonic spirits. And how they get in. And the struggle that flesh and blood has to endure if you make yourself vulnerable and it made me remember that book that I read about that woman who lived in this isolated community this is a true story so you know those three people in that household were overtaken by demonic spirits because those types of violent crimes are common for demonic spirits. Okay, I have to stop. I'm running out of time.